my brother, and it's my pleasure, and I've said for years that money is not power, and, uh, education is not power, but knowledge, truth. And so when you look at money is not power, education is not power, but information is power. And if I give you bad information, you have bad power. And if I give you bad information for 2,000 years, you start... Uh, doing educational books on that bad power which you thought was the truth. And that's why it's so important today to have shows like yours. And when my wife called me and told me that you called for the show, she said, isn't that the guy you said you like so much? <laughs> 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 and so I thank you for being there. I mean, when people hear you, you make it sound like it's easy, but a lot of research goes into it. A lot of things go into it, and then you make it easy for us. Once you find somebody you can trust with information, then all at once, then, it cuts your research time down. I've got people I can call. Uh, they can call me. I don't have to check it. And that means there's, uh, oh, i got four people that do nothing but read. I said, no, don't worry about that. That's, let's... Uh, Let's do this one interesting thing. I was, I had had all the data typed up on um, on on cancer and soy soy product, mm -hmm. and the scientist lady I gave it to. I said, I need you to type this up because I got to go to Budapest, and they know soy causes cancer. Mm -hmm. So my stuff got to be, you know. And see, the interesting thing when you're around your peers, you don't have to worry about them asking. What we call stupid, it's not stupid for my mother to ask it because she don't know. My mother did not know <laughs> that King James was king of England. She did not know that he was such a weird, strange homosexual. Mm -hmm. He killed his mother. That's how bad he hated women. Right. And his lover was Lord Buckingham, which Buckingham Palace was named after. So when you got meetings you go to where you know everybody there got information and they're just there to refine it, to tune it up, to refresh. And so I'm 80 years old, and I went to church with my Baptist mother every time. She could go babies to church, man. And, and, and I remember when I was old enough where I understand people talking, I would hear mom and grandma and, 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 and grandpa talk about, you know, uh, uh, Reverend uh, so and so is gay. I didn't know what what I, what a five year old know. Uh, you know, the choir director is kind of funny. <laughs> so I'm saying this to say this: when we hear this discussion now about black ministers, it's just a new group of black ministers. Everybody in the Baptist church, damn near know everybody in there who's gay, from the choir to in the pulpit and the whole thing, and and we never hated up on them. There was never no conflict with them. It never said, you sit over here or sit over here. And so we knew the entertainers that was gay. That didn't stop us from buying their record. The gospel folks, that was, we knew who they were. And so all at once now we had this weird, strange thing with these black folks. And then when, when, when President Obama came out for same-sex marriage, right. And, and and then the preachers, and then you start hearing these talk shows where, well, well, how bad is this going to hurt him doing that? Well, let's look how bad. I ain't never heard a preacher in the black community tell people that drinking is godly, drinking is spiritual. I've never had them tell you to go out and get a drink. And yet, if you go through the African-American community, every other you see taverns, liquor stores. So how is it that the preacher have never said, go have a drink, uh, go get drunk? And yet, and so then we say, that, I say, well, who's listening? If, if, if they preach against whiskey and alcohol and, and, and all of that, and it still happens, mm -hmm. so now what all it wants is we worried about this powerful voice. And, 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 and so the, so when you have shows like this that elevate, now my grandmother would listen to this if she was alive, and there's a whole lot of things, but certain things feel good to them. And so you look at, at, at black folks' names. Who would have ever believed that Elijah Muhammad would have the power to 
to talk to non-Muslims. Mm-hmm. That radio show, probably the strongest voice in the black community. All, all your stations was owned by white folks, but they had black stations mm-hmm. for that market. Yeah. And so, so consequently, what happened is when he said pork is bad. Now, look, I got a grandmother, grandfather, mother. Listen, they would never touch pork. They, they would never be part of a Muslim system. They, they Baptists and Jesus, and they don't want nothing but Jesus. They don't want him black. They want him white. They don't want him with nappy hair. That's them. But they listened to a man that wasn't talking about Christianity. Mm-hmm. And they stopped eating pork. They told me, I got to go here and give me some of these beef ribs. <laughs> and, and so consequently, when you think about the effect he had, and then look in the black community, Muslims stand on the corner. They're not dealing in drugs. And to show you how perverted this system has made us, how many churches have invited a Muslim to the church to speak with pay, to talk about how did you all do it. I can see if you left the black community and moved someplace, but you stayed there in the black community. Nobody robs you, not because they're scared of you, because of your demeanor. You have no bumps on your face. You you had a suit and a bow tie in the in the summertime, and I don't see him sweating. And so and so consequently, when you stop and think about what you can do, it takes time and time and time and time. But along with that, people are are changing. People, I look at the uh, the uh, the Willie Lynch letter. And for those of you that that don't know about, it, I think you should have somebody hit up on the internet if you don't have one mm-hmm. and pull it off. And read it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've actually read that on this show before. We're talking to Dick Gregory. It's Floor of Wisdom Radio. I'm Sean Anthony, your host. But go ahead about the Willie Lynch letter. The Willie Lynch letter come out the CIA headquarters. That's that's 1960 lingo. Now, there's a whole lot of people who don't know it. But for those of us who's been out here and know how they trick, you say, wait a minute. White folks didn't talk that way 300 years ago, and yet they got black folks swaying by them. I don't understand that. Mm-hmm. I mean, if a black folks are lying just to get some sex, what do you think powerful white men to do to control the whole planet? Okay? <laughs> and, so, and so consequently, if you listen to the dialect that was used, when back, back then, man, they were still speaking that old poor British Bah, bah, bah. Yeah. Matter of fact, Mark Twain was the first writer in America to get away from that old English dialect. And I'm not talking about ignorant poor. I'm talking about the dialect of, of, of Britain. And so when you stop and think about, you know, how the whole piece is put together, yeah. and, and then, but over and over and over, I was with a minister this Sunday. I was speaking at the church. And I was saying, you know, that the uh, when when people talk about uh, uh, different things in religion, well, how few people? My, my my grandmother couldn't even understand that the pagans were celebrating Christmas and Easter three thousand years before Jesus Christ was born. You know, my mother, God bless her heart, she just is precious and peaceful. And you think if she walked in your radio station, you think God spit her out. But if you tried to explain to my mother that Jesus Christ wasn't a Christian, she would stomp you to death, man, because her ignorance to that is she didn't know. Yeah. Well, that. you know, we've talked about occult holidays on here numerous times, you know, uh, being that, the, you know, especially Christmas, uh, Easter, all of these, these uh, holidays that are celebrated, especially in the churches, the black churches uh, primarily, um, they all have a, a pagan origin descent. Well, now, let, let me tell you something about paganism. Do you know most folks don't know that paganism ain't no voodoo or hoodoo? It's just like the word voodoo. That's a French word that when the scientists went in after, after Napoleon's great army was beat up in Haiti, they sent the scientists in and said, let's see if we can figure this out. And they found out a term called Uncle Tom, that's shape-shifting. And the, 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 the French scientists called it voodoo. And they, 
if you just fall in on you think voodoo, voodoo's scared. No, no, voodoo mean, in French means spiritual atom. You can't see a spirit and you can't see an atom. And so the, the question I ask people that, that, that pagan, pagan, pagans, what country were they from? Why do you think we don't know what country they came from? It's a reason. They came from Africa. And what you said is rooted on, on paganism. Well, if you drop the fear and, and that part, Christianity, as we know it in the white world, came from pagan. They just twisted it and made it white. Yeah. And, so, and, and, and so consequently, when you're struggling for your life and struggling to survive, you don't have time to reach back and, and, and talk about history or talk about this. You have breakaways that will, and then they'll break away and they'll break away, and then all at once, one day, I never thought I'd see a son. We thought, me and my they thought we was cool, man. We named our children after we woke up, African names, huh? Ayana, Yohante. And he said, no, Yohante ain't enough with respect. He changed his name to Yohante Machiavelli. He don't want no white slave master's name. And so when you stop and think about all your Jewish holidays, they coincide with ours. They just make it Jewish. And so they can, they can see through that. You know, I go to China, go to the Christian community, and Jesus Christ looked Chinese. I go to the Japanese community, Jesus Christ looked Japanese. I go to Brazil, Jesus Christ, I come back to America, go to black church, here, a white boy. And, and so my mother did not know that Jesus, that Christianity did not happen until 100 years after Jesus was dead. She didn't know that. And that's why she thought Jesus was a Christian. She didn't know that Jesus' brother James was killed the same way he was. And so, and so consequently, shows like this here that put it out, oh, you're going to get all kind of negative stuff. And I listened to Creflo Dollar, the news broke about him, yeah. you know, beating up his daughter. Isn't that a shame how the media just manipulates? No, look, 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 look let's don't be fun. We talk about how they treat Obama. They killed Kennedy, man. Well, who do you think you are? What, 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 the movement, the, the, it's always been nasty. It's more nasty to us, but it's always been nasty. For instance, the Secretary of Commerce that had the accident out in California last week, why wouldn't you think he was drunk? If it would have been Romney, you would have thought he was drinking. I'm not talking about you people. See, you slant it the way you want to slant it. That's what this old tricky government's about. How you think Hitler slipped up on them people? Uh -oh. Why are you going to check out no good racist system and expect anything good out of it? And so, so consequently, when you look at Pepper Dow, first, his daughter called. Mm -hmm. nah. And then his oldest daughter backed her up. And so, so, so my whole thing is, you know, I raised 10 children, and I would never hit a child. Now, you got black folks that talk about, well, I heard a woman, when she heard me say beaten, you know, they got fantastic research. And, brother, when I pulled it, it's a Chinese woman at the University of Chicago that pulled that part. They have proved scientifically beyond the shadow of a doubt that 98% of your hardened, violent criminals and sex maniacs, all of them got beaten. When they, you see, if I'm your daddy and I hit you, when that go up to the brain, it don't say good hit or bad hit. If you ever get hit around your eye, there's a thing that swells up called a hickey. And that is to protect your eye in case another blow comes. So that, that the, the, the brain inside just know, and it shoots all kind of chemicals through the body. Let me tell you something about fight or flight. In the old days, it still happens now, but when there wasn't no houses and no cops and just trees and stuff, and like five, ten thousand years ago before, you hear something go, ah, and the brain know that's a tiger. Mm -hmm. And so automatically, fight or flight comes in. Now, years when I heard people say fight or flight, I mean, you can run or you can stand back and ball up your, no, 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 no. Flight means get out of here. You hear an explosion. Fight.
might mean there's an old woman or a child up there, let me go in and get them. It got nothing to do with you putting up your dukes, hitting somebody. And so consequently, when fight or flight takes over, ah, your blood thickens. Why? In case you get bit. It'll take you longer to bleed to death. It throws hormones into the body. What do those hormones do? It, it protects the blood flow. So uh, your hair stand up on your head. That's your antennas, so you can look taller to that animal. And that's what goes on. And it don't have no, it don't happen for this person, don't happen for this person. And so consequently, when they, when they sit around, it's like, for instance, thousands of people and got off death row because of DNA. Well, do you think DNA, just DNA was here the first day the universe put together with human beings? We just reached the level where we can go in and and and, and, and actually and, detect it and detect it <clears throat> fingerprints been here since we've been here we just got to the point you know you know how long it was before humans didn't know there's no two people it's nine billion some people on this planet there's not two of them ever been alike never. Or ever will be alike yep. there's never two snowflakes that's alike there's never two tree leaves that's alike. So when you understand this whole universal piece, and now we just coming in to the consciousness where we can look at it and, and deal with it, and so the shows like yours raise that level. It's like I was in the kindergarten. If you tried to teach me trigonometry before you taught me arithmetic, mm -hmm. you do me a disservice, step by step by step. And I just say thank you. For your type of show to put that information out there, and then there's a whole lot of folks, man, yeah. that might not never call. They sit home and they listen, and they listen. I was telling the 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 the, 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 the Baptist church where I was speaking last Sunday. I said, if you want young folks to, to read the Bible, all you got to do is get your rap group. I'm not talking no big rap group, <laughs> and let them rap the Bible. Not only will they hear in a week, they have memorized the whole Bible. That's right. And so the rhythm have changed, and we don't seem to understand that, what used to go. So when I'm listening to people call in about Creflo and the incident, they say, well, look, ain't no, can't no government tell me what to do. Man, I started hearing white. I started hearing them old Negro-hating white folks during the old days after slavery. These are my Negroes. You can't tell me what to do. Oh, son, the law have changed. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, the law have changed. I lynch them. I ain't never went to jail. No, no, the law have changed. They don't, and black folk don't seem to understand this is a new day to day. When I was a little boy, uh, the white man to jump on two cops, raped two sisters, and, and, and all the black folk, you lucky he didn't kill you. Oh, do you know there's five cities in America that in a, a four-year period they, they paid out $2.5 billion dollars for police brutality cases. Yeah. Do you know it was a time that the, 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 we all going yeah. to, to to Washington, I mean, to, yeah, to New York to for Al Sharpton's rally against police brutality? And, and do you know the cop just got indicted? It was a time, you didn't have to worry about that. When, when, when uh, Mega Evers was killed, I was with him a week before, and I could feel, I just thought we was going to die that night. Mr. Gregory, let me just interject. By the way, if you're just tuning in, we're talking to the great uh, uh, Dick Gregory. This is Flow of Wisdom Radio. I am Sean Anthony, your host. I read your, your, your book, uh, Nigger. Yes. And, and let me, let me just say, that quite a compelling story you have. And just as you were about to say, you was, you was with Edgar, um, Medgar Evers right before they killed him. Yep. That part of your book was so intense as I was reading it. Yes. It was uh, very compelling. But I, I want to go back to um, Martin Luther King. Before we do that, let me just finish this real quick because sure. it's important. Uh, Della Beckwith killed him. Now, he had to get a lawyer. Out of all the property the United States government could build a, build a post office on, JFK administration bought Della Beckwith's property, and that's where he was able to get the money to pay the lawyer and was found not guilty. Now, a couple of years ago, they retried that case, and he's in jail now. And so, or he's either died in jail, but he's in jail. And what I'm saying is 
that things have changed. What used to, it, you don't work now. The, the, when I was a little boy, a school teacher, if you was a woman, you couldn't be married because you get pregnant and be time out of school. If you was a woman worth $10 million, not a black woman, just a woman in America, $10 million, you couldn't go buy a car or get it financed. You had to get your father, your brother, your uncle, or your preacher or the priest to sign for you. You try not selling a woman a car now because she's a woman. And you will be in a tremendous lawsuit. So I'm saying it's the same thing about all that old beating up and, and, and all that hitting children and all that. And finally, before we get in there, I had a woman call me. And she said, Mr. Gregory, I, I ain't never found no disagreement until now. She said, let me tell you something. My daughter is 20 years old. And she just went to college. And and I would beat her with a strap or whatever if she got out of line. And said, Mr. Gregory, she called me two weeks ago and said, Mom, I just want to thank you for all the whoopings you gave me. You made me a better person. I said, Miss, may I say something to you as a father, huh, as a parent? She lived with you 20 years, then she went to college. So one day get a piece of paper and write down 20 years, and then write down 364 days, and then multiply that by 20. And you see how many days she lived with you. And then she eat three meals a day, multiply that by three. Now, that's how many meals you have fed her. Has she ever called you up and say thanks for the food you gave me? Are you out your mind? Somebody going to call you and thanks for a beating, but not thank you for the clothes you bought me, for the birthday things you bought that's the craziness that exists. You deal any way you want to deal with it. Any way you want to deal with it. If whoopings was good, you just have to do it one time. That's why killing, that's why killing is fine. You kill somebody, you have to kill them twice. <laughs> now come people that you spank, you keep spanking and keep spanking. That's the universe saying, it's not working. Try something else. All right, we're talking to Dick Gregory. This is Floor Wisdom Radio. Sean Anthony, your host. Um, talk about, you know, just, just give us a, a story to my listeners um, about Martin Luther King, you know, the type of man he was, you know, behind the scenes, something that we may not uh, well, know. Well, let me, let me say this. Um, Martin Luther King, you know, my second language is profanity. You know, you never hear it when I'm on the stage. Right. <laughs> and and, and uh, Martin called me one day and said, Dick, I need to talk to you. Well, um, could you wait till everybody's in bed? We're down in Alabama with a big battle. And uh, I said, yeah, and I thought he was going to call me down there to tell me, man, you can't cuss these white folks out like that and say the things you say. And so I was ready to hear him. I get there, and he says, I'm sorry to bother you this late at night, but I just wanted you and I to talk. What's the mafia? <laughs> it's, it's a man that changed the whole world. He didn't know what the mafia is. Why not? He was in Atlanta. Ain't no mafia in Atlanta. I said, Doc, the one group of people you want to shake up more than these rednecks is the mafia because they got a grip on this country, and they decide who's going to do this and who's going to do that, especially when they control these unions. Now, King was a meat eater. He had eat the booty out of a cow. Ew. <laughs> okay. Now, let me tell you why I'm telling you this story. Okay. I'm at the Worldwide Vegetarian Conference, and there's about 20,000 people there. I'm the featured speaker. Right. right? And I said, oh, you all, how many of y'all in this room are aware that Hitler was a vegetarian? And some hand, and you heard people moaning. Oh, now they listen to me because they know I'm not going to lie to them. Mm -hmm. said, how many of y'all know that Hitler never cussed? How many of y'all know that Hitler never drank? How many of y'all know that Hitler was bed every night, 90 minutes after the sun go down? That's universal law. I said, listen, now let me tell you something. I'm around vegetarians. Matter of fact, more people understood vegetarian after I wrote the book. And I became a vegetarian, and I never heard of it before. I just saw a Mississippi sheriff kick my wife when she was nine months pregnant. And I wanted to make believe the reason I didn't do nothing was because I'm nonviolent. And then I decided, okay, then that means animals shouldn't be killed for my dinner. I was just teasing myself to, to get off the spot for 
watching that man kick my wife. And and the right thing, because if I'd hit him back, who knows how many other folks would have died down there. Right. And so consequently, when when I became a vegetarian, I thought that you needed protein. And I thought you'd just get protein. So I started eating Knox gelatin, Knox gelatin, Knox gelatin. <laughs> I didn't realize Knox gelatin come from horses hoofs. Pork, and right. Pig, I didn't know that, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and so consequently, I stopped. Now, as long as I was a meat eater, I didn't weigh nothing but 130 pounds. When I became a vegetarian, man, I went up to 360 pounds because I kept eating. I eat six, seven, eight times a day because I, I kept wondering about where am I get the protein. And then a brother asked me, well, yeah, how come you don't eat no meat, Negro? Uh, I, 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 I said, well, I, I just said, what'd you do for protein? And then with love, I said, you know, it's a lot of protein in a steak. Yeah, how come you don't eat steak? And I said, because cows don't eat steak. And the bell rang in his head. I said, wow. I said, yeah, the meat you eat don't eat meat. Hmm? You don't have to eat hair to grow hair. You don't have to eat kneecaps to grow kneecaps. There's certain things that's manufactured in your body if the order is right. Now, I say that to say, so I was telling some vegetarian friends of mine about King. And I said, I have never met a person as loving, as kind, as peaceful. He didn't say one thing on TV, and when the cameras left, he yeah, them honkies, man, uh, who they think they are? He was always that even, lovable, peaceful. So I said to them, so if you understood King and the people that understood him, and know how much he liked chicken, and know how much he liked pig and that, and then you realize you got to do more than just change your diet, okay? You got to change something inside with a compassion. Now, to get to your question, when you look at King and know his peace, then you know there's a universal power. Somewhere, if you didn't know it then, i tell you why. King was a Republican. Right. His mother and father was conservative Republican. His grandmother and grandfather was right-wing conservative Republicans, okay? Yeah. So everything King did to change the world, he did not learn that at home. Them old Negroes wasn't talking liberation. Man, when you talk about all them black colleges and, and all them, they wasn't talking about liberation, man. They was talking about gold, you know, good education, good PhD, and prove to white folks that we the why do I got to prove a bunch of stereotypes you come up with? They, they never, not once, so not once did King hear liberation when he was in Morehouse. Not once did he hear it at home. Where did it come from? Where did that liberation theology come from? That's the King. And King was not killed because of racism or prejudice or segregation. He was killed because he became the first black in the history of America to get in a position to determine public policy. And that's what took him down. But when you think about him and you see him and he, the way he smiled, the way he, oh, God, and his, uh, he was a, a comic. that you, you love to have 10 million kings in your audience. And, and, but he was, and you can see, you, you know, the, the civil rights movement, 98% of the people in the forefront of that movement had reverend in front of their name before they had Ph.D., you know. And, 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 and so when you look at that black church and, and, and uh, Pentecostal Sunday, let me tell you something that's so from the pagans in our spirit. Pentecostal Sunday, the slave owners, it's, it's come like 40-some days after Ash Wednesday. It's Pentecostal Sunday. Black folks didn't have no calendar. Something in their spirit they knew. And them white folks look at their demeanor and knew they could not keep them on that plantation. And they would stray two or 300 miles away and sing it to celebrate Pentecostal Sunday. And in New York City, where they would gather... I mean, in New York State, in Albany, and right now where they gathered is the Albany State Capitol. In New York City, where they gathered is the 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 the, 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 the home where the, the mayor stays. 
So there's something so spiritual about those areas that we knew it in our heart. Nobody had to teach me when it's hot outside or when it's cold outside. And, 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 and so that and King, you know, the, the, the people, I, I, I laugh at people and I say, well, what about these black folks for attacking President Obama? What about that attack King, man? Nick Rose was attacking King and Malcolm and Elijah Muhammad. I mean, I mean, Malcolm attacked King. Who do you think you are that you're in a society and because you got a Negro in the White House that somebody else can You know, I got a right to be crazy. I might be just a, but that's not racism. When you look at these white folks that treat this one different from the rest of them, then you got a serious problem. And I'm thinking about here, I got a black president the most powerful human being on the planet, but he can't go to New York tonight by himself with nobody with him and get a cab. But some old murdering white dude who can kill 30 children and escape from death row, he can get a cab. When you think about here, we got a black man in the White House, but haven't got one in the Senate. Since when did it get easier to become president of a state, of a, of a country, than to be a senator? And so you see... This, this, this whole thing and what white folks is doing now, you know, they say, well, the Tea Party is racist. I don't believe that. I mean, if they're racist now, they was racist before they was the Tea Party. And if you look at the, all of the news now that's, that's coming out, you got that minister down in Florida that hanged the president. Well, when the, the Secret Service, they said they was going to, well, that should have been loud because here's a man with power. When he speaks, people talk. And he got the president up there hanging. And somebody, I mean, maybe maybe we got to say it's your right to do whatever you want to do. But when you're talking about the president and you're talking about how you can create incidents where somebody can can shoot him or, 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 or whatever, and, and, and so somewhere, so King pulled off something that never been happened before. He took a group of people, and remember, we didn't have 10% of the American black folks with us when we were there. You know what it's like, man, to be in Mississippi and somebody call your, your house that you stay in and said, we're going to come by there and blow up this house. We'd be there in 10 minutes and you can't call the police or the FBI <laughs> because they probably the ones that made the call. Right. On the march from Selma to Montgomery, when we got there and it was over and we were all going back to the airport to get out of there. Not scared, just the, the mission was accomplished. And Mrs. LaRusso was shot that day. And now we know there was three C uh, FBI agents in the car when that white boy pulled the trigger. Well, the answer is, well, we was undercover. And undercover, we don't get involved or in, in stopping the crime. We just gather information. Wow, wow. We're but talking to Dick Gregory we, here. Uh, Flow of Wisdom Radio. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yep. Uh, Dick Gregory uh, is live on the show. Flow of Wisdom Radio. This is Sean Anthony. Uh, such compelling information, Mr. Gregory. I, I got to add. I want to switch gears here and ask sure. you a, f a few more questions. Um, I had the privilege of of interviewing s the late Steve Coakley, um, yep. and and he mentioned, you know, he he spoke very highly of you. Said that you were was his mentor and taught him a lot. You know. And, and, of course, you know, I've heard a couple of reports, you know, um, people were hitting me with information saying that he had passed. And it was really hard for me to find, you know, a concrete source of information, you know, but sure. but he he did pass, correct? Yeah, oh, yeah, he, he died. And some people think it, it wasn't just a, a normal death. Right. Uh, I haven't slowed up the research because he's dead now. And, uh, but what a, he, he, he reached an altogether different person. He reached, he, he had an audience out there and a following out there that loved him. And normally that group of individuals that followed him uh, wouldn't have got the information no place else. You can't get it from NBC or CBS or, or, or none of that. And, and, and so he was there and he paid a price. He was a whole lot of radio shows he wasn't able to do. I mean, black radio shows he wasn't able to do. Now, and, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the, the reason why I brought that up, one of the things that he mentioned during the interview was uh, we, we we spoke about Dave Chappelle, the comedian, 
and uh, when he got offered this big sum of money, and uh, he turned it down and, and, and fled to Africa. No, he didn't. What, what no, do, he didn't. Okay. No, he didn't. What, what, what my point, I want, I want you to respond to that, but my point for bringing it up, um, Mr. Coakley, Steve Coakley said that he was actually with you at, at some point or something like that. No, what happened is this. David Chappelle had one of the brilliant minds. See, there's no money in comedy. The money is in writing. Okay, uh, Ed Weinberger, who started off writing for me, and 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 he developed into one of the fine writers. He's the one. If you look at the Bill Cosby show, you see it's created by Ed Weinberger. If Bill Cosby's made a billion dollars, which he have, Ed Weinberger have made ten billion. The money is in writing, and so David Chappelle. Went to school in Washington, D.C. He went to the Duke Ellington School of the Fine Arts. And a white dude, they grew up together. They developed all kinds of good projects and stuff. And that's when he hit him and this white dude was the writers. Well, network, TV network don't tolerate that. But he was so good, they had to figure a way around it. But they had to let him do because the money they was making on him and the, the whole, I mean, they, they, he was getting hate mail, but that's America. But all at once now, he signed a $50 million contract. That $50 million contract, most of that was for writing. What he didn't know in that contract that he had signed to bring on about 20 other writers and what hurt him so bad as this white dude that they'd been friends. He carried him all the way down the road, had switched over, and that hurt him bad. When I talked to him, uh, I, uh, it was a New York Times uh, reporter interviewing me, and I had never met him. And I said, well, he said he's going to South Africa to talk to him. I said, well, would you give him my number and tell him to call me? And then he called me, and then we become very, very good friends, you know, talking friends, and, and, and the hurt. Most folks don't know that story that I just said, but that's what that was about. It, it, you see, when you hit white supremacy, Bill Cosby, see, see most folks don't understand white supremacy. White supremacy is not Ku Klux Klan or white system. Kind of white supremacy is the high. I mean, I used to hear my mother say the problem is these old redneck, Negro-hating white folks can't read or write. And one day, I pulled my brother to the side, and I said, do you believe, she believes, she really believes that that type of white boy determines public policy? Now, I didn't know it at that time. Like, I know that my problem is the president of General Motors and, 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 and AT&T and Boeing Aircraft and Harvard and Yale. That's the problem. Those are the ones that determine public policy. And so, consequently, when you stop and think about that Bill Cosby didn't understand white supremacy because Bill Cosby said, I want to buy General NBC, and NBC was for sale. And he had the credentials and the money and the, the, the credit worthiness to get it. Right. And that's all at once he said, what? And then all at once his son come up. Now, let's look at his son's death. Mm. His son was driving on the highway in California, okay? He has a flat tire, okay? He comes off and they say he get robbed. Man, in the old stage call today, you could stand out there, Wells Fargo, with the horses and rob them. Who in their right mind going to be on the highway to rob somebody in a car? So all at once, that car got a flat tire, and it came off the highway. And he called this white woman that showed up to help him change the flat. She had on a mink coat, a mini skirt, and high heel shoes. So that's all like, Now, what Bill Cosby knows that few people know is that that was one of the upscales Mercedes. And if you had a flat, you just pushed the button and it changed its own tire. Okay? Mm. Now they told us that it wasn't robbery. Hello? He had $6,000 cash. Uh, they said um, he had his credit cards and his cell phone. Nine months later, they arrest 
a Russian immigrant and said he did it. And then when we check it out, we find out that Russian immigrant was in Mexico City that night. I'm just telling you how it works and how they do things and how they, you, I dare you, you better, you better behave yourself. For instance, uh, you, you, you read where the, the, the city council, a bunch of them had to step down, a couple of them, for some criminal activity. Mm-hmm. Well, in today's Washington Post, they called uh, uh, Councilman Brown arrogant. Well, wait a minute, man. <laughs> Madoff stole $50 billion. They never called him arrogant. They, they, they just wiped out, they say $2 billion. They wiped out about $12 billion with J.P. Morgan Chase. And ain't nobody been arrested. Nobody been investigated. And they, if you read all you find, they said a mistake. They, they don't call it theft. They don't know where it is. How do you <laughs> take that money? You know? And so that's the way the white supremacy. That's why in America a Negro can never be a racist. And why? Because I can dislike you because you're Irish Catholic. I can dislike you because you're Polish. I can dislike you because you're Jewish. That's prejudice. Prejudice is prejudging. Racism is the ability to control somebody else's faith and destiny. And I don't care how bad one might hate white folks, we do not have the power to see to it their children go to a bad school. We do not have the power to see to it that they get brutalized by the police. We don't have the power to see to it they can live in bad neighborhoods, run down neighborhoods, and nothing they can do about it. And so when you look at racism, the ability to control somebody else's faith and destiny, and then you start seeing a whole different thing. But there's some very interesting stuff that's coming out lately about, you know, the, uh, the American have their they income have dropped 40%. Now, think about this. This didn't happen under the president. This has been going on for the last 10 years. 40 That's what you're looking at. And that's where Roosevelt was brilliant during that first Great Depression, when he said there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Mm -hmm. If you go back and hear about Hitler and the Nazis, that he didn't just come to power, he lost election after election, and the economy got bad. And I used to always hear how to get a loaf of bread in Germany. You had to take the money to the store in a wheelbarrow. That's how little the money was worth. And then when you, you had that white mentality, there's a lot of things you can't, oh, you just can't figure out. We're supposed to be. So then you can blame it on. So they blamed it on the Jews. They blamed it on the Jews. This is my problem. And they get away. They didn't blame it on bad management. They didn't blame it on the politicians. Right. So we, we're going through the same thing now. Yeah, it, it, it seems like it's uh, uh, the United States is, is a mirror uh, of, I guess, Germany in the 1930s. Yeah, but there's one difference. The only reason we can't produce a Hitler, we can't produce an honest demigod. <laughs> they did. We're talking to Dick Gregory. This is Flow of Wisdom Radio. I'm your host, Sean Anthony. Um, let, let's let's switch gears again. Dick Gregory, let's talk about chemtrails. I've discussed this on my show numerous times. I've seen some interviews that you've done where you've, you've uh, mentioned it. The artist Prince even uh, said in an interview with Tavis Smiley that he got privy to this information on chemtrails because of you. Yes. Well, first, why would my grandmother and grandfather or my mother, why would they hear anything about chemtrails when they only hear it? They don't even hear them talk about it on NBC or CBS. You don't hear the government talking about it. So you just look up in the skies and you see all them clouds up there. But before I get in that, let me just read this to you. And those of you all who want to do the research, uh, Roger Masters, he's of Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire. And here's what he says, and this never ran American paper. Crime linked to pollution. Oh, polluted water can cause brain damage that turns ordinary people into violent criminals. Researcher Roger Masters, well, wait a minute now. If this water is so bad... And they keep talking about how the poor folks is failing in this country. Uh, I, I don't have no idea. I might could trace this back to water, to, 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 to polluted water. So consequently, here's scientific data. P- 
polluted water can cause brain damage that turns ordinary people into violent criminals. And then he goes on and he says, uh, New Hampshire, he compared crime figures from the FBI with information on industrial discharge of lead and manganese. Now, lead will run you crazy. Manganese together, you got a piece. So now, listen to me now. Information of industrial discharge of lead and manganese. He found a link between pollution levels and murder, assault and robbery. Counties with the highest pollution level have a crime rate triple the nation's average. Now, chemtrails, they mix that stuff together. I looked into one of the planes once. I, I was privileged. To, 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 and he said, they, they, you see these huge, look like oil tanks, uh, oil drums up there and the tubes coming out and they mixing the stuff and they putting it in and then they, they, they put it out and then they have another system where they can name aim it anywhere they want to name it. So at nighttime while we sleep, if a malt liquor, when you, you, you this week, uh, go into a white neighborhood and see if you can buy malt liquor. Why? You can't buy it because it has a thing in it called manganese. And and once you get enough manganese, you kill mom. And so this is, and so when you look at everybody's talking about uh, a couple of weeks ago, bath salts uh, shootings in Chicago, thirty people dead, blah blah blah, and it never dawned on us. <laughs> hey, but this is the same thing. The Jews did the same thing. <laughs> Do you realize when the Jews was in them camps, man? There was Germans, Germans that would sneak and tell them what they was planning on doing, and they just couldn't believe it. And they would turn the Germans in. The Germans would be killed. And so we look at the same mentality here. We really believe that this crime rate we're looking at is, is, is black. We really believe that all of this violence we see is black folks. And, and so when you stop and think about it, I don't know if you followed, or not sure you have, about this bath salt. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what I was trying to interject. We got Dick Gregory on Flow of Wisdom Radio. This is Sean Anthony. Yes, yes, please talk about this bath salts and this cannibalism, uh, these drugs and, 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 you know, things that they're trying to implement. Well, they're not trying because they are. Sure. But, go, but go ahead. This bath salt that people snorting and turns them into cannibals. Well, I looked at some research for 30 years ago. Now, they didn't say they could drop it on the enemy army, but they said they could go to a football stadium with 100,000 people and, and drop this gas, and you can't smell it, it turn you into cannibals. And, and, so, and, and so now we see it. Remember, salt was here before Jesus Christ was here. So now what are they doing? The interesting thing is the quietness of the government. First, you had an incident in Florida where the cop went in and this guy was eating the brains, the face off the guy, and the cop said he growled at me and the cop killed him. Now, here the news broke uh, two students at Morgan State. Right. Uh, now, what they didn't tell you, they were African students, but they live two counties away from Baltimore, Maryland, where Morgan State is located. And they weren't at school when this happened. So why are they wanting to say, we, we're trying to get more information from the school? How come? And then as we start doing the research, we find out it's running rampant in the Marines and in the military. Why? Because the, 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 whatever this compound is that they're putting in this bath salt is not detected in the body. Well, the, the, the big fear in the military, is you got to go take a drug test. This is not to take. And then when we check it out, we find out all but five states permit this. Five states? I mean, you're talking about people eating one another. And so how do you know that Al Titus not doing it? How do you know that Castro's not doing it? Now, I, I don't believe that. I'm saying, how come this government haven't checked it and to stop? Man, if you get some some spinach with salmonella, 
they stop everything. Say, you know, there's, there's, there's salmonella, there's a group of spinach. We're trying to get to the bottom of it. Uh, the, 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 oh, we located it. come from a farm in Colorado. Or if you go to a restaurant tonight and they find out somebody in that restaurant three days later had hepatitis C, infectious hepatitis, don't you know they start getting in touch with all everybody who's been in that restaurant to make sure you haven't been in contact? You haven't heard nothing about this year where the government said we're going to take up the investigation, we're going to get to the bottom of it, we're going to see where this is coming from. And so, and, 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 and so again, when you stop and think about now you go back to the early 50s, early 50s, American CIA have admitted now that they did an experiment in a little village outside of Paris where they put this chemical uh, drug stuff into the wheat that they make their bread with. And the people started hallucinating and thinking it was airplanes and stuff and jumping off mountains trying to fly. Now, this is like, what, 70 years later they admit that they did it. But I'm saying if they had that technology back in the 50s and what, was doing it to white folks. <laughs> what, what makes you think they won't do it now? Yep. We're talking the same thing. It's perfected now. <laughs>